Hello, I'm Anna Katerin. My pronouns are they, she, and I am the assistant curator at the Fraley Museum of Art at the University of Virginia. The Fraley Museum stands on the territory and homelands of the Monacan Nation. Welcome to Curatorial Clips, short videos by the curators at the museum and our faculty colleagues on works in the collection or our areas of interest. Today I will talk briefly about contemporary artist Martin Gutierrez's 2018 work titled Indigenous Woman, which was acquired by the museum in 2019. Martin Gutierrez is an artist, performer, and musician who works across performance, photography, and film. Gutierrez produces elaborate narrative scenes that employ pop culture tropes in order to explore the complexity, fluidity, and nuances of both personal and collective identity in terms of race, gender, class, ingenuity, and culture. Indigenous Woman is a fictional fashion magazine comprised of exhaustively detailed editorials and glossy advertisements. Through the work, Gutierrez reasserts control over her own image by acting as editor-in-chief, model, photographer, stylist, makeup artist, designer, and author. Gutierrez is driven to question how identity is formed, expressed, valued, and weighted. The magazine is a celebration of Mayan Indian heritage, the navigation of contemporary ingenuity, and the ever-evolving self-image. It investigates the ways in which our sense of self is socially constructed and knowingly poses more questions than it answers. The cover, shown here, features the artist holding a small cloth doll. Gutierrez's braids, pom-poms, and red lips echo the dolls, prompting the viewer to question stereotypical views of indigenous cultures that are neatly packaged for consumption by white Western audiences. Indigenous woman is an exercise of full autonomy that challenges binary ideas of ethnicity, gender, and sexual orientation. Niño Indio is one of the earlier editorials Gutierrez began working on for indigenous woman. In it, she is shown modeling Guatemalan textiles from her family's collection, styled with jewelry, bananas, high heels, and other props. Through Neo Indio, Gutierrez illustrates a contemporary living history, not one that is just buried, and dismantles the tropes of nostalgia and poverty that are stereotypically associated with indigenous identity. The image on the right is one of Gutierrez's favorites from the series because it has a little part of each of her cherished family members in it. They're embodied through her sister's handmade denim, her mother's cat, and her grandmother's blouse, shown in the photo. Neo Indio highlights the long and harmful history of the fashion industry and its appropriation of indigenous culture, and challenges the invisibility of living indigenous craftsmanship. To quote the artist, quote, fashion is a good veneer for making people look at what otherwise might make them feel uncomfortable, end quote. In the masking series, Gutierrez is shown with fruits, vegetables, flowers, insects, and fish placed on her face and neck. The satirical beauty editorial illustrates fictional skincare rituals created with lavish ingredients that leave the face of the artist almost unrecognizable. In masking, Gutierrez disguises the typical markers we rely on to determine a person's identity, challenging binary ideas of gender and the limiting ways we are trained to categorize individuals. The masks leave the artist's face unrecognizable, Making it, impossible, making it impossible for us to assign identities such as gender and ethnicity to it. The ingredients required to make the masks are used to question the commodification and appropriation of indigenous practices. Of the series, Gutierrez wrote, quote, I wanted to do a series that could allow me to gain wellness from the practice of it. It became exciting to build an identity based on alien forms looking for shapes and textures and colors in fruit, flowers, and vegetables 
that could create what we recognize as a face. We are trained to look for faces, and once we see faces, we are trained to take them apart and ask, what kind of person is it? Is it a man or a woman? How old are they? Where are they from? Building that narrative, we look at how people dress, how they walk, talk, and carry themselves. All of those markers are so connected to the binary of gender and how we separate people into one or the other. There's so little opportunity not to be shifted into those two categories, and masking was the opportunity to treat this as alien, end quote. The next editorial, titled Queer Rage, is made up of several scenes that illustrate Gutierrez's preteen anger and frustrations, also known as Queer Rage. In one image, Gutierrez is pictured in a painted ski mask with her legs dangling in a private indoor pool. In another, the artist is posed on a white fur couch with bright red tights and a green jacket. The couch bookended with images of a white tiger. Of the series, Gutierrez has said, quote, Queer rage is about doing too much. It's about emo adolescence and a want to create controversy. It's the feeling you get as a preteen that the world sucks and everyone is misunderstood, end quote. The elaborate makeup and outfits Gutierrez wears throughout the spread illustrate the ways in which personal style is used to express and also protect. In the Demon series, subtitled Deities of the Ancient World Resurrected in Hair, Gutierrez is shown in gold jewelry, beaded masks, and intricate, intricate crowns made of braided hair, posing as fantasy renditions of Aztec gods. The gods Gutierrez embodies are Aztec deities that manifest opposing concepts of duality and gender fluidity. Of the work, the artist said, quote, I was looking for iconography that celebrated bodies outside of the binary, deities even bigger than bodies, because in general, we tend to see ourselves in, an, in, in a God's image, whatever that God may be. In the final editorial of the magazine, titled Body in Thrall, Gutierrez is seen posing with different, incredibly lifelike mannequins, swimming in a pool, lounging in a hammock, and serving drinks. The images create elaborate scenes that illustrate luxury consumption and popular culture. Of the series, Gutierrez writes, quote, While our social power structure contains the lineage of historical oppression and conquest, what I present is a contemporary reorientation of debatably fluid bodies whose oppression is nuanced by both intimacy and inequality, end quote. Through the works in Body in Thrall, Gutierrez visualizes her navigation of contemporary ingenuity and the self-image. In these images, she works to communicate her own fluid identity, one that bridges the binaries of gender and ethnicity and aims to subvert pre-colonial standards of cisgender white beauty, raising questions about power, perception, and identity. Throughout Indigenous Woman, Gutierrez challenges essentializing and limiting notions of identity that are enforced through white supremacy and colonialism. The ads featured throughout the work explicitly illustrate these themes and were an opportunity for the artist to be more overtly outspoken. An ad for Covert Girl Mascara features the tagline, quote, maybe she's born with it, maybe it's white supremacy, end quote. And another ad for Whitewash Soap features the label on the ad that warns, quote, keep out of eyes, keep away from children, animals, natural resources, and indigenous cultures, destroys everything on contact. End quote. As the magazine's letter to the editor states, quote, Indigenous woman marries the traditional to the contemporary, the native to the post-colonial, and the marginalized to the mainstream, in the pursuit of genuine selfhood, revealing cult cultural inequities along the way. End quote. 